Good afternoon and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am joined by Deepti Sachdeva and Gauri Dwedi to take us through this segment as we are getting more and more corporate reactions. We have Niranjan Hiranandani back with us for the post-budget segment. We have, we have with us uh, uh, Kartik Sharma, who is Group CEO of OMG. Now, they have a great idea of the way uh, the media is looking at things. Sagar Daryani is an entrepreneur, co-founder of Wow Momos from, uh, from Kolkata Food Entrepreneur. CS Sudhir is founder and CEO of indianmoney.com and so we can take the discussion forward I'd like to ask you first Karthik uh, okay. tell me uh, you've looked at the budget we're all in the media business looking very very keenly at the budget wanted some inflection point is this giving you the pick is this budget going to give you the pick up that we were all looking for absolutely I think first of all uh, the government has done a commendable job it's a growth oriented budget it's a budget full of hope uh, a budget of revival. So I was very, very pleased to see uh, that it's one of the most balanced budget that we have seen in several years. And this is what the industry, uh, particularly the media industry, also gets the brunt when things don't happen. Uh, just to remind everybody, last year, same time, uh, we had a pretty, uh, around uh, March, April, uh, things are pretty bad. For three, four months, there was literally no volumes. And uh, it's great to see that uh, the government is putting money on sectors which are extremely important for even the common man. And uh, it's really, really balanced. And here on, I am uh, sensing that the next three to six months, month on month, there will be great revival. We are already seeing some trends happening in the auto sector. Uh, many of our clients on that uh, side of the business and we are seeing a huge uptake and very heartening to see the budget. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think I agree with you. You know, we have been uh, in the in the media business. We've been waiting for the moment when people yep. begin to regain consumer confidence, um, and and maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the one. Uh, yep. uh, over to you, uh, uh, Gauri, uh, for for taking the next question and it forward with Niranjan, and then I'll, Dipti and I will jump in. All right, thank you for that, uh, Nub. Uh, I think, uh, Niranjan Hiranandani, uh, would you like to come in on the clarification that uh, the government has given uh, in the press conference that Nirmala Sitaraman is still holding, in fact, where she said that there is a slight divergence of view between what the economic survey expects the next year's growth to be and what the government expects it to be. There is a difference. There is almost a 1% uh, difference between the two. Uh, Gauri, I wouldn't bother about that 1%. There was a talk between uh, 5%, 7%, and now it's between 10 and 11. I think, uh, by and large, uh, two things have definitely happened in the budget. Number one, the expenditure side of the entire story has been very, very, very strong. And this is extremely important if you want to pick up the market today. There's no alternative but to focus on the infrastructure spending that we do. Number two, the health sector and the vaccination becomes extremely important. Between 5%, 7%, and now it's between 10 I think the entire story that we now talk about is really going to be vaccine all the people as early as possible. Focus on health is the second segment that I think will become important. And the third is really to get the economy back into track because so many people have in the MSME sector and other sectors have lost jobs. They really don't have not been able to get back to work and the economy is suffering. So it's not only the official economy like uh, motor cars and other things that you are able to measure on a daily basis, but a large number of people who are not in the formal economy. Uh, on the other hand, there is a positivism which is very clear. The collections have gone up to 1.2 crores in terms of GST and the other aspects of it. So if you see the combination of the two and the uh, disinvestment that the government wants to do, a combination of that borrowing that they want to do, the taxation being uh, better than what it was before, and the optimism on the expenditure side, I think will turn around the economy in the next three to six months. And that is a very positive story. 
this will help all the other sectors whether it is travel and tourism whether it is uh, media whether it is real estate all the other sectors will then climb on to that sector so <coughs> it's all interconnected so strongly the important part was that the government needed to make those necessary changes plus may i add one more point i think that this <coughs> investment in the banking sector has now been clarified that they are going to disinvest to banks they are going to put an ipo for lic they are looking at the disinvestment as a resource that they want to do and that will be very good because otherwise they would have come back to us with higher taxes and other rates the sorry part of it of course has been the fact that i would have expected some rationalization of taxes the individual taxes going as high as 42% and the corporate tax between 15 and 25% I think some rationalization between the two was needed very so badly. So, Anna, I'm especially... not the only one asking for rationalization of income taxes. Mr. Hira Nandani also joins me in uh, in our expectations being yes, dampened yes. and not being met. No, no, I'm completely there with you. Who wouldn't want to? Who wouldn't want to have lesser taxes? But I think uh, you know we also need to contribute to the country at this point of time. and eventually i am a great believer in the fact that the private sector needs a push and 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 one and the government needs to get over this whole socialist thinking and stop being embarrassed about the private sector so i i like the fact that the private sector was being given such a great thrust unprecedented level of freedom responsibility given to the private sector is is i think uh, you know uh, is, is the most important takeaway for the budget from me and i i like the entrepreneurship you know niranjan in a way is an entrepreneur in real estate sector he has the mindset of an entrepreneur a very <clears throat> you know sort of a motivated person but but i'd like to ask two entrepreneurs here cs sudhir and who's a founder of indianmoney.com uh, and of course my friend sagar daryani who's going to be the next food king of india by the way niranjan watch out if you can invest in his company he's the next food king of india uh now now i want to ask you sudhir from a from a finance perspective and other perspectives is the government doing enough to promote entrepreneurship in this budget i think uh, the best part here is uh, uh, they have taken that bold reform which we were waiting since 2014 right since the time they came to power we were expecting them to make those bold reforms this time if you just look at the overall expenditure In fact, uh, last budget, uh, our total borrowings used to be about 20% of the total uh, uh, income, uh, total uh, uh, receipts. But this time, it has gone up to 36%, and and the uh, fiscal deficit also has gone up from 3.6% to about 9.5% of the GDP, which is absolutely fine when you are. boosting the infrastructure because infrastructure development is the you know is key for startups growth and you know to support startups in india because if you want fdi investments to happen and if you if you really want more more support if you want to give more support to startups then that is important other than that i was also expecting one other thing for startups that was the the emergency credit line announced was about 20% of the outstanding loan at the time of announcing this emergency credit line but now i was expecting some extra uh, lending to these you know companies uh, maybe at least those awesome. who have got the turnover of less than 500 crore maybe you know based on gst returns or gst payment because if it is only based on the profits all of us have not made profit in the last financial year because of all these issues we had yeah. so probably if we would have and you know, have done that based on gst payment that would have helped us i i i agree with you uh, pawan goenka is joining us today another of in, indian uh, indian corporates great, indian inks greatest leaders uh, so i will just come to you in a bit sagar i'd like to go to pawan first uh, pawan goenka thank you for joining us overall response to the budget i thought the message was of self reliance I think the government is investing in the India story. There's a such a sharp increase in capital expenditure, uh, you know. Uh, so we have actually not spent much time after the budget, like usually we do sectoral analysis. This time, uh, Pawan, we have not done sectoral analysis because we are looking at the big story that the government is trying to put India in, the direction we are, we, the government is putting India in. What do you think? absolutely arnab i think you have uh, you have summarized it very well 
Uh, this time in the budget, there wasn't that much sectorial, uh, and and that's fine because uh, the the whole thrust is to what I call increasing the denominator. That means if we get the economic growth, mm. the GDP numbers going, then everything else will fall in place. Uh, the demand, demand, demand was the three things that I was looking for from the budget, uh, and and that's what it's focusing on. And once the demand starts growing in one sector, it will always uh, sort of. Uh, uh, pass on on other sectors also. Uh, so if you are doing infrastructure, for example, that's going to help cement industry, steel industry, auto industry, uh, and overall uh, cost of doing business will come down because of the better infrastructure that we have. Uh, and, and therefore to focus simply on two or three big ticket items as they have done in the budget, as they have done in the budget, and kind of expect that everything else will take care of itself uh, is the right thing. And uh, as you have seen from the response from various industry colleagues, uh, uh, there are always few things here and there that one would talk about that we wish she had done that, we wish she had done that. But, uh, but overall, I don't think you can fi find too many, too many faults uh, with, this, with this budget. Uh, and, and, and we are we in the industry. Uh, what about are, the auto uh, industry? Uh, pretty happy with, uh, with, with the way. With what about the auto industry? Uh, yeah, so I, auto I'd industry, like to take uh, a specific yeah. question on that. So maybe, yeah, because you know there was a there's a hike in the custom sure. duty of some select auto parts to 15 percent. Is this an advantage or disadvantage for you? One. Secondly, there's a voluntary vehicle scrappage policy. Uh, you know, and a scheme to augment public transport so system by introducing uh, more buses. Uh, you at Mahindra have always been very proactive and very yeah. progressive so in the way you've looked at the growing needs of the auto industry with societal changes. How do you view these two things and overall for the auto industry? Yes. So with the, what the industry was looking for uh, in the auto industry, the number one uh, request, expectation, demand, whatever you want to call it, was the scrappers policy, uh, which, has, which has happened. Of course, we don't know the details yet. Uh, we hope that it is incentive-based scrappers policy. Uh, otherwise, it won't take off, uh, and we will wait for a couple of weeks to see those details. Uh, so scrappers policy is one big thing. Uh, that is a win-win-win uh, in terms of creating demand for the industry, in terms of tax revenue for the government, in terms, in terms of lower pollution, lower uh, oil consumption, uh, all of that. So, so we leave that aside uh, and, and, and assume that it's being done with the right thing. Now, this little tinkering uh, that we have in the uh, auto component uh, uh, in case and import duty, uh, this is only on few components. Uh, I don't have the math yet to see whether it's going to have a big impact or not. Uh, probably not uh, for, for most companies. And there also is also the reduction in steel duty, uh, which should also help because that's a very large component. And uh, right now, you know that we are kind of uh, reeling under the pressure of steel price increase. So overall, it may turn out to be neutral uh, in terms of the input cost uh, to the auto industry. Uh, the only other, uh, and, and, and then the, like you said, the putting in some 2,000 crores for 1,800 or so buses, electric buses, uh, I presume, uh, is a very positive thing because that will give uh, impetus to the electric vehicle uh, uh, transport uh, movement that, uh, that, is, that is happening. So that's a very positive thing for the auto, for the auto industry, of course, for, for few companies, but, but even so, to get the electric vehicles going uh, is a very positive thing. But the biggest thing for the auto industry is the infrastructure, uh, which, will, which will make a uh, make huge difference. Well, in this, yeah. the industry was not asking for too much. Uh, yes, there were a few colleagues who were looking for GST reduction, but GST reduction, I think, at this point of time is, is, is an unreasonable expectation. Uh, I don't think government can afford to reduce GST on the automotive products. Not at this time. Not at this time. Maybe six months, one year from now. Deepti, you can take it from here. Yeah. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, Maybe before I take one, one more question to Mr. Yes, Pawan Goenka, and, and Mr. Hiran Andani made a good point. Uh, you know, I, I also saw the widest smile perhaps just on his face. So I, I want to know what made him smile about the budget. What is that one big thing, Mr. Hiran Andani? And also if you can talk a little bit more about affordable housing. Because we haven't touched that topic much here. Now, affordable housing and rental housing have got a boost. That clearly does mean that you, you're looking for more jobs in the informal sector. So, uh, three things. The smile on the budget was that uh, they were able to increase the amount of total spending in the budget without tinkering and plussing on the taxes. That was the smile for the budget. Because they relied on disinvestment, they relied on borrowing, and they relied on deficit financing in order to meet the needs of the budget and was able to grow the budget size for this reason. So I think that was the real smile because they really managed to get a budget which was very 
tough budget for anybody to do. So that's the smile part of it. On the housing side of it, affordable housing is the target of the Prime Minister, who said housing for all, affordable housing for all by 2022 December. That's why the extension of time for the purposes of completion of the projects and the benefits under that scheme to continue until 2021 and uh, probably up to December or March of 22 will be continued in order to meet the objective of 1.1 crore houses. Two benefits are coming under the affordable housing scheme, namely that uh, the GST is only 1% as compared to 5%, and uh, there is a zero tax on the affordable housing segment. The negative, of course, is uh, the upper cap limit of 45 lakhs, so large number of houses where land cost is high, like Mumbai and Delhi, are not able to get the benefits of the affordable housing scheme. So that's a negative in terms of the affordable. The other end of the pendulum is also important for the commercial REITs and INVITs which has taken place. Uh, so benefits in terms of tax reliefs have been given in that so that more investment can take place where uh, a lot of REITs for the national highways and other segments are coming up. And also two REITs have been announced. My expectation is a couple of more REITs will also come into the house. So housing segment, unfortunately, we had to see something left for the middle class and we were expecting some small increase in the deductions available in the above 45 lakh category of 3 to 5 lakhs uh, deductions, but that was not there. But I think the focus on affordable housing, which is 60% of the total houses in the country, have continued to receive this benefit. So large mm -hmm. segment of the housing segment has definitely taken, and the budget is so well balanced. I was quite amazed because when she talked about the expenditure side so much in the beginning, I was worried that she was going to add some more taxes somewhere down the line, which would have been onerous, which she did not do. Yes, but yes. of course, I'm sorry she didn't reduce yes. it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Sagar, I want to take you in on this. Uh, you know, you, you represent the hospitality industry. Now, these are industries where direct benefits were expected from the budget, but you got none. Do you think there are indirect benefits for, P for someone like you? See, in a way, a bit disappointed that, you know, our sector has been a bit neglected because even earlier, you know, when the finance minister had announced the stimulus, you know, we were completely neglected. Uh, our industry employs, you know, uh, 7 million to 8 million people. Uh, but one good thing is that, you know, I am someone who believes that numbers really speak a lot. I mean, if you look at the Sensex today, it's 2,300 up. Uh, look at the Nifty. I mean, what she's done, what the government has done is that, you know, it's given a very clear-cut message that, uh, you know, I'm hard to have to keep sitting here. We are going to make capital expenditure. We are going to, you know, come out and fight this out. Uh, without burdening the arm army with regards to taxation. So, you know, it's left money in the hands of the normal person and that is going to improve the market sentiment. People are going to come forward and spend more. Consumption is going to go up. I mean, we are a consumer-dominated economy, so people are going to come out and spend more. So that is really good sign. But yeah, I was expecting, I mean, on behalf of the NRI, which I am a part of, the National Restaurant Association of India, we had made a few representations, you know, we wanted rationalization of GST because, you know, uh, we, we pay 5% GST, but we get no input credit and we have huge rental costs, we have raw material costs, which we buy by paying taxes and there is no, in, I mean, there is no input credit. So the entire purpose of GST gets diminished. So, you know, we had proposed a dual structure whereby, you know, we can... Uh, you know, uh, restaurants which are growing, which are uh, above a you know, turnover of maybe uh, 10 crores or so, you know, can get that input and it can be a dual policy of 5% and 18%. Uh, that's going to make many of the loss-making restaurants profitable. Uh, and, you know, with the pandemic, the way we've been affected, many of your favorite restaurants have shut down. So that would have been a very big boost. But what I am happy about is... Uh, you know, the government has come out and battled in, in the front foot as an entrepreneur, as a startup. Listen. You know, there's lots for the MSME sector, uh, yeah. startups, you know, getting the tax holiday for one more year. Yeah. And the, the icing on the cake, you know, I mean, no capital gains, uh, capital gains exemption for anyone investing in startups for another but, year. So you see a lot of money being pumped into startups, no, no. Uh, into, into different no, no, sectors, you're, you're pushing, not just the food sector. But, but you're, pushing your, case, you're pushing your case very strongly. No, no, you're pushing your case very strongly there, but the fact of the matter also is, uh, you know, Karthik, uh, people like uh, Sagar Daryani represent the new wave of Indian entrepreneurship. He's done brilliantly all of last year. If there's someone who's actually bucking the trend, 
and people like him will be important for 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 indian entrepreneurship going forward he's actually done remarkably well for his organization and for all his thousands of employees in a very difficult time so yes i think the only thing is people like him should get some incentive for contributing i mean if there's someone who does an uptick on their growth by 15 20% or more at this time that person in my view kartik deserves a special award don't you think so kartik so so Absolutely. sagar represents that kind of new young indian entrepreneur Absolutely, I think there are a few sectors which probably have been left out, and I uh, get Sagar's uh, sentiment. Uh, any business, uh, what really has happened last year, uh, everyone has suffered. Whether you are a corporate, whether you are a common man, whether you are a mega corporate, and uh, it requires a bit of uh, you know uh, the energy to drive growth. It's not easy. Uh, the other side which true, we have not true. spoken is yes, jobs have been lost. uh last year unfortunately in several sectors uh, uh while the statistics may be whatever it is i think uh, i am a great believer and uh, eternal optimist uh, whatever the government is doing is absolutely uh, on the right it. track are we are we doing the right things for the people i think it's a big yes it's a progressive budget yeah. uh, also there are many uh, i was also heartening to see the uh, some of the tax stops given for startup uh which is a huge huge yeah. uh, so india yeah. probably is the third largest startup economy more than 12 or 13 unicorns are already there and that is also going to fuel maybe anywhere between 50 60 lakh jobs in the next 2 to 3 years absolutely so i think the directionally everything is right yeah. uh, uh we should just make best use of i understand sagar's uh, concerns uh that said aside i think uh, overall if you were to see it's a great budget it's a budget of great 